Hello, friends, people. I'm Elisa, and this is Sondra Travel Mag. This, this is obviously not a mag. This is a YouTube. But if you like the YouTube, check out the mag linked below. All right, I've got my iced coffee. I've got a candle lit. Let's jump right into it. I'm going to be talking to you about five trips you can take that will not break your bank. Hopefully. Hopefully. All right, so starting with number one, and that is getting an Airbnb with your friends. I am a huge fan of Airbnb. I'm also a pretty big fan of my friends. So this one has actually been the main form of travel that I have been able to do since COVID. You know, it's not like, oh, we're gonna fly to a different country and do all these things, but it is a really great way to you know, have a little adventure to break out of that, you know, monotonous routine and to hang out with your friends. It's been one of the only ways that I've been able to like spend time with my friends um, in not public spaces. You know, you get it. The best part about Airbnb is that there's a whole wide variety, you know, we like to stay in places, you know, entire houses or entire cabins, that kind of thing. But you can stay in an apartment downtown or you can stay in a room of someone else's house. Like you can specify whatever you want and there's tons and tons of options. Also, you can specify your price range, which is the best part because you can find places for like 50 bucks a night up to like 500 bucks a night. And it depends on what you value the most. Like, do you want a really fancy aesthetic place that's more expensive? Or do you not really care what it looks like? You just want to be able to save money. If you have pets, you can select pet friendly places. And that's really fun because sometimes I like to bring my little puppy dog along with me. She's great. She's not in the room right now because she snores loud. I kicked her out but sometimes I like her there. If you want a hot tub, get a hot tub. Find what works for you. And the best part is if you do it with friends, you can split the cost. The more friends, the more you can split the cost. I like to look for places that are local, you know, within two to three hours, because you're more likely to convince your friends to go with you if you, they don't have to drive far, let's be honest. But it's, you know, it's far enough away that you feel like you're in a different atmosphere. What me and my friends usually do is we kind of divide up the meals, split those up before we go so we can each kind of have in mind what we're wanting to make and then go grocery shopping before we get there or just bring ingredients that we have from home. Or if we're in a place that is, has, you know, like civilization, which sometimes we're in the middle of nowhere, so no grocery stores. But if we're close to civilization, we will get there and we'll all go grocery shopping together and we'll pick out all the things that we need for each of our meals. So that way it splits up the cost. It makes it, you know, cheaper for everybody. You can pay what you want for your meals. Also, a way to show off your amazing cooking skills that you've gained during quarantine to all of your friends. My friends and I actually did this for my birthday last year. We booked a cabin in the middle of the mountains, in the middle of nowhere, and we just stayed in the entire weekend. We played Settlers of Catan, and we watched Avatar The Last Airbender, and we had some amazing food, some amazing drinks, and it was honestly probably my favorite weekend of all of 2020. It was so simple. It was so inexpensive, but it was such a nice break and a good way to spend quality time with people, um, which didn't really happen that much in 2020, as you know. The more nights you stay, obviously the more expensive it's going to be, but the more friends you bring, the more you can split the cost to get all your friends together. I'm telling you, it's the best. Moving on to number two, and that is staying with family friends. Now, this has actually been something that my family's done a lot and my family travels together a lot. Um, so, and, you know, my, my parents just kind of decide that they wanna go stay with their family friends and us kids are like, sure, cool. But it's actually ended up being one of 
my favorite ways to travel. Even though I'm not huge on like, here's a person from your past, we're gonna go stay in their bed. Love that. But no, this has actually turned out to be one of my favorite things to do. If you want to go somewhere else, but you don't want to pay to stay there, think about going somewhere that you have family friends. Think about, uh, I say family friends, because if you're my age, like around my situation, um, you know, maybe your friends live in different cities, but maybe they have, you know, rinky dink one bedroom apartments and they don't really have the room for company. So um, that's why I said family friends instead of just friend friends. But you can also hit up your friends, just your friends, not your family's friends. But it's actually turned out to be a really great way to kind of connect with people that you haven't seen in a while, connect with family, friends, and to get free lodging. That's the best part, free lodging and sometimes free meals. Now, of course you should be respectful. You shouldn't just expect someone to host you. You shouldn't just mooch off of them. But a lot of the time, you know, family, friends will be excited to see you. They'll be excited to host you. So if you're looking to go somewhere, maybe further away, maybe somewhere you haven't been before, um, maybe you don't wanna pay for lodging. This is a great way to do it, you know, ask your parents, ask your family members if they have any friends. In my experience, the people that we've stayed with have been more than happy to host us, more than happy to catch up with us. They're like, wow, I haven't seen you since you were a baby. And you're like, wow, I haven't seen you since you were an adult and you're still an adult. Um, but great to see you again. One of my favorite trips that I've taken was actually a family friend who lived in Denver and they were going out of town for the week. So they called my mom up and were like, hey, would anyone want to come out here and dog sit and house sit? And we were like, absolutely we would. So we got to stay in Denver for a week uh, with free lodging. You know, we had access to a house, a refrigerator, some amazing dogs. <laughs> and they let us borrow their car, which was game changing. We were able to travel anywhere we wanted to. We went to Boulder, we went to the Stanley Hotel, you know, the Rocky Mountains National Park. We went all over because they trusted my family. You know, they let us stay in their house, they let us watch their pets, and they let us drive their car. Honestly, that's probably a trip that we wouldn't have taken otherwise. It would have been expensive to, you know, get a car or get lodging. As it was, we really only had to pay for the flight out there, the food that we ate, which we went grocery shopping most of the time and cooked meals at their house, um, and the activities that we did. So that ended up being an amazing trip and a not very expensive trip. You know, maybe not everyone has family friends who live all over the world or all over the US, but it's worth looking into. Moving right along to number three, and that is camping. Now I know camping might not be for everyone, but it is usually less expensive than getting a hotel or an Airbnb. Some good old fashioned camping is, you know, one of the best ways to get connected with nature and to not spend a lot of money. Uh, you can literally just buy like a pack of hot dogs and some s'mores and a roast everything over the fire for every meal and there you're fed now there's kind of a scale of camping there's kind of you know just go find a place in the wilderness and you know good luck my personal favorite is you know campgrounds that have uh you know lots of campsites but they still feel kind of secluded and private um but they have bathhouses with showers and toilets those are great, love those. Um, and then on the opposite end of the scale, there's like glamping and experiences like that, which Airbnb is also a great way to find, you know, that kind of experience. There's also just like campsites available on Airbnb. This is not sponsored by Airbnb. I'm just a huge fan. Now to some camping might seem kind of overwhelming, but really all you need is a tent, something to sleep on, and a cooler with some food in it. Um, and you can have a great time. Uh, you need water as well, water's good. Water gang! This isn't water, this is iced coffee. But camping can be as simple or complex as you want. It is a great way to get into nature, to get connected to nature, to just kind of abandon society for a little bit. Um, love that. 
Love it. Camping is definitely on my list of things that I wish I could do more. Um, my issue is that I don't like bugs and I don't like heat. I really like air conditioning and I really like places without bugs. But I have really, really, really enjoyed all of the camping experiences that I've had. You don't have to have expensive equipment. You don't have to go to an expensive campsite, but you can. You know, there's a whole scale. You can be as simple as simple can be. I mean, you can make your tent out of sticks and leaves if you want. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that. But if you want, or you can get a glamping site with electricity and Wi-Fi and Netflix. You know, there's a whole scale. So just, just do what you want to do. But it is a great way to have a little adventure um, without a lot of money. So moving on to number four, and these last two, they can get a little more expensive, um, but they're still, you know, cheaper as far as the world of travel goes. Um, so number four is just a good old fashioned road trip. We love road trips. Uh, road trips are the best. I have been road tripping since I was in the womb and I'm not being sarcastic. I'm not kidding. I'm pretty sure my family went on multiple road trips while my mom was pregnant with me. And then as soon as I was out of the womb, more road trips. So road trips were like my first form of travel and road trips still are one of my favorite forms of travel. So there are endless ways that you can road trip. You can plan out your every stop, every meal, every stay before you go. Um, that's great, that's valid. Or you can just hop in the car, get on an interstate, have a general direction and see what you find. Um, I've done it both ways and Honestly, I don't have a preference. My family's go-to has been pick a general direction, drive as far as you can in one day, see what you can along the way, um, stop at a rest stop, get one of those hotel coupon things and pick a hotel that is cheap and stay there for the night. And just keep repeating that process over and over every day until you're back home. Since Airbnb stepped into the game, it's made things a lot more interesting and fun. You don't just have to stay at hotels all the time. You can do the research before you leave. You can pick the Airbnbs you wanna to go to. You can book those, you can go, you can, you know, have a blast. Or you can do the same thing where you just get in the car, go a general direction and book an Airbnb along the way. That is a little riskier uh, price-wise because you don't, you know, you don't have all the options open that you could if you're picking your Airbnb last minute, but a lot of places will allow last minute booking. And that's an easy thing to do. That's an easy way to, you know, get, to just be free, to just live free, to just hop on the road and go. Now road tripping and being constantly on the move opens up more opportunities for food to get more expensive. Um, a way to keep your cost low is by snacking. Honestly, road trip snacking is one of the best forms of snacking there is. Your stomach might not always agree, but your mouth usually will. My rule of thumb, a lot of the time when I'm traveling and don't wanna spend a lot of money on food, is to kind of snack in the mornings and eat one big meal later in the day. So it can kind of be your lunch and dinner combined, but you only have to pay for one meal and just kind of fill in the rest with snacks or things that you can take with you, you know, like peanut butter and jelly, something like that. So that way you can still eat at local restaurants. Like you can still experience the food of the area but you don't have to spend all your money on food because also gas is a factor and gas can be expensive so that's a way to keep your cost a little lower is to just you know one one big meal a day and snack it up in the rest of the times so we have made our way down the list and have arrived at number five and number five is not the cheapest option it's not um but it is for if you still want to do a big trip, but don't want to pay thousands of dollars. And that is subscribe to Scott's Cheap Flights. And I, I, I will probably mention Scott's Cheap Flights in every video that I do because 
it has literally saved me thousands of dollars. So what's Scott's cheap flight? Scott's cheap flight. So what's Scott's cheap flight? So what Scott's cheap flight? So what Scott's cheap flights is is a company, a subscription service that scours the internet for price drops in flights. And you can put in the airports that are close to you, that the ones that you want to see, you know, like the information for, and they will send you a list when there's a price drop on flights, um, a list of your airports and the prices that it costs to get a ticket from your airports to places all over the world. Pretty much every flight that I have booked, every trip that I have taken has been with Scott's Cheap Flights because since learning about it, like, I'm not gonna take a trip without it. Like, I don't decide my destinations anymore. Scott decides my destinations because why would I fly somewhere for thousands of dollars when I can just wait for Scott to email me? So the thing about Scott's Cheap Flights is you kind of have to stay flexible with where you're going and when you're going. So kind of the way that I have started traveling since learning about Scott's Cheap Flights um, you know, instead of booking a thousand dollar ticket and flying to the destination and, you know, that's fine, but I will keep an eye out on Scott's cheap flights. And if I have a destination in mind and they have a flight to somewhere, you know, kind of close to there, uh, I've done this several times in Europe. Like I've wanted to get to one place and they have a flight to a different country, but if I fly if I book the, you know, the $300 flight to that other country, there are cheaper like intercontinental flights to get from, you know, country one to the destination that I want to get to. And at the same time, that's more countries that I get to visit. That's more opportunities to see more places, to do more things. And at the same time, I'm literally saving thousands of dollars. So like I said, this is a more expensive option if you're looking to go on a bigger trip. Usually the prices of the tickets I've seen um, internationally, they'll range from three to $700, which uh, is a lot of money, but it's a lot less money than regular price tickets. And the subscription service is only $30 a year. Uh, which is absolutely worth it because of all the money that it could save you. Thousands. The thing that hurts me the most is seeing people who want to travel so bad. They want to have adventures. They want to have new experiences, but they automatically think that they can't because they don't have thousands of dollars to spend. Even if you think that your area is boring, that you think that there's nothing you can do anywhere close to you that is going to be exciting. When it comes down to it, your life is only as romanticized as you make it. So maybe the biggest trip you can take is going down the road to the little town that doesn't mean anything to you, but there are new restaurants you haven't been to, there are new coffee shops that you haven't been to, and if there is one thing that I'm pretty sure we've all learned in the past year is that life is short and it's not guaranteed. So if your soul is restless right now, take it for a walk, take it for an adventure. It doesn't have to be expensive. We all have to feed ourselves. We all have to live, but you deserve a break. You deserve a vacation. Um, even if you don't have thousands of dollars to spend on it. Anyway, those are my five trips that will not break the bank. These are all tried and true methods. I have tested every single one of them. I would not be giving you this information if I did not experience it myself and have positive experiences. So those are my tips. Um, I hope you've learned something from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you go out and take a trip. Um, if you did enjoy it, make sure to like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you have any other ideas for ways that you can travel uh, cheaply without breaking the bank, drop them in the comments below. I would love to learn more. Um, thank you guys for watching. Stay safe. Stay wild. I love you.